Hi guys, welcome to the Library Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. This tutorial will be talking about user authentication using the Slim PHP Micro Framework. Uh, you might have uh, heard of Slim and you might have done one thing or the other, probably web application or building a RESTful API uh, using this uh, framework. We'll be implementing the Slim Power uh, where we'll be setting up uh, a framework uh, a, a REST API framework out of the box uh, within a couple of uh, minutes and get that working. We'll be creating a user, uh, we'll be logging into the user, we'll be fetching some data about the user and so on. I'll walk you through on how to achieve this uh, right now and I would like you to move along with me. Uh, right there in the Slim Framework uh, website, Slim is a PHP micro framework that helps you Quickly write simple yet powerful web applications and APIs. We are going to use the full strength of the APIs. So to do this, uh, you just need to install uh, Slim using the Composer. That's the recommended uh, platform to actually download and install Slim. Uh, if you're using the Mac or if you're using the Windows, uh, you could run this on the terminal, get your Composer ready. And uh, after that, run this, create a project, create a directory to uh, to the project and actually point that and you'll uh, call the composer.phar create project slim slim skeleton uh, with the name of the uh, package or with the name of the application with that you get our uh, slim ready and you also need a uh, zamp we'll be doing this locally we are not interacting with any cloud uh, uh, functionality probably going to uh, hosting uh, server We'll be doing this uh, locally in your machine. So I'll employ you to install ZAMP or WAMP, which has a combination of Apache, uh, PHP, and even MySQL running out of the box. So I have ZAMP right here. So you could have that. You start up the MySQL server. Uh, you start up the Apache web server, uh, which is cool. And you have PHP as well, right, right inside this uh, mini server. So once you start that up, you get that uh, rolling. And you could point at the local host. Uh, the local host, we should, should be familiar with this if you've done uh, something similar or something in PHP or you've, you've set up a basic website. You should be familiar with this uh, interface. This is the PHP My Admin, where you could create a database, where you could create a table, and also you should have some SQL syntax while we're interacting with the database. I have the, 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 the database called Demo uh, with a table called Users. So in here, I have a structure of of this uh of this table. Let's get to see uh the structure very well. Uses. Let me go into that. Uses. I uh, even have some data right there. Let's get to look at the structure. Uh, it's an, we have the fields ID name, username, password, and API key. The ID is also increment, and uh, it's a parameter key. So with that and the null. No, you don't allow a null value. So if you need to allow a field to be null, you could set that as well. So you create this. Uh, once you have this uh, uh, interface, you're ready to go. So after this, I'll be added straight to the sublime text uh, where I have the slim package and the classes or let's say the methods that will be interacting with the API. The slim out of the box will take care of routing, will take care of middleware. It's, uh, it's a boilerplate for you to actually start up any APIs, interact with uh, the PHP framework anyway. It's a PHP based uh, server side framework. So we are actually going to extensively use its capability. So right there, we have the libs, which is basically the slim framework. You could see the exception, helper, HTTP middleware, uh, the routes, the routes, and the router. Uh, the Slim and um, the view. So these are all out of the box. Once you install Slim using the Composer, you're going to have all this structure. So now we're going to work on this. We save that right in the libs. You have the version 1, this the versioning of your APIs. You know, once you move from the, at least you start from the version 1, you gradually move up 2, 3, 4, and depends on how you have been uh, versioning your API. So we start from version 1, which is right there. And we have the HT access. Very important. You need to write the HT access, which is going to rewrite the rule and it will call on the index.php anytime you point to this particular uh, local directory. So cool. You have that set up in the HT access and uh, you have the index.php. 
rather in the include folder you'll be having three methods or let's say three files the constants the db connect and the db operation the constants we only need to declare the username password the host and the database name uh, the username is root with no password the host is localhost while the db name is demo setup uh, let's get to look at the connection uh, to the database you call the class db connect you could declare a variable to store the database link you call the constructor underscore try double underscore construct that's a constructor to the db connect and the method to need to connect to the database you need to include the constant the php file right there and you need to connect to the my it's mysql database calling the mysqli that's the new you either connect to the mysql database using mysqli or the pdu don't use the mysql it's been deprecated now you pass in those parameters set up in the constant the host the username password and the name check if any error occurred while connecting uh which is the mysql connect error yeah so after a successful connection uh you need to return the connection link which will be usable across all methods all classes so you have this connection right there let's get to look at the db operation this is where you get to declare your method the methods you need to interact with the database where you need to fetch some records where you need to post some record where you need to put or uh, update the database update the table so this is where you actually need to create the functions now the first is the connection which you're calling from the connect cool and you need to require that you need that file the db connect and you get that the connection set up so that these methods could interact with the database now you have the create user that's the method to create a new user uh which takes three parameters uh let's really modify this it should be a new user no period it takes three parameters the name the username and the password you check firstly if it exists that if this username is it probably this person has uh actually created uh its profile early on so this is a method it like a helper method to check that and that's rather sitting underneath uh which takes the username as a parameter and uh you need to run a query since you have a, a value to check from the database you prepare and you select the id from users where the username is equals to the variable you're passing from uh the method or the function now you have that right there now you need to bind the params since you are only pointing at a column which is the username and it's a string data type if it's an integer you rep you, repli you replicate that with i if it's a string s double d and so on uh, you have to execute that query you start the result and you need to return the number of rows that were returned if it's greater than zero so we get to look at how we're going to get that map with uh the 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 link which is actually going to fetch what we need so that's for the create uh, the is exists now we need to continue with the code we have the password you can use the md5 or you use the ssh1 the way you could encrypt your password we just simple using a, the md5 now you, you could also generate an api key uh which will be passed in the header while calling some uh some some sensitive data so this is the essence of creating a robust api api keys are, could be very useful uh when you are even trying to know uh the amount of calls that has been made i uh, try to restrict access to your api so why are you, are you going to generate the api you also use the m5 to get a unique random number with a length of probably 15 or 10 or so and you get that back to this method so this method api uh, this function api key is going to have something now you prepare uh the query which is to insert into the users the name the username the password and the api key with its corresponding values cool you bind the parameters since you are binding four fields string data types you call the sss four times and you ex execute that that is for the create user let's get to look at the user login when the user is trying to log in this is the first stage of even setting up any android application which is data driven that you need to interact with the api you need to interact with the database sitting outside the client 
so you need to actually first of all set up your api in any language you feel you could use we have php ASP.net, we have java we have uh python different uh uh robust apis that you could we have node.js so cool but this is php now in the user login you have two parameters the username and the password you get the password encrypted using md5 and you prepare the statement to select all from the users where the username is the variable passed from the from the function and the password as well you bind the parameters you're calling to our fields ss in string data type you execute that and install the result cool this is to get all users we get to look at get all users later on because we are only concentrated on the register and the login at this point in time it's not done you need to move to the index.php this is where you get your routing set up uh, at first you require once the db operation which has all the methods to interact with you call the slim php which is out of the box going to give you the platform the enabling environment to get your api ready now let's get digging you have the request loader and you instantiate the slim app it's usable cool yeah you could say that request get all different types of requests the post the get the put the patch the delete Mention them all verbs that you need to interact with the database. You have it right there. You're trying to post now, which is the creating a, a new user. You call the function with a closure and you use the app. You could call the middleware in between when you're trying to pass any header, the API key, and some other authentication. But now we are moving further. You verify the required params, which we have the method to do that for you. Over here, the function is going to take the required fields. You have the error, the error fields, the request params. Uh, you, you, you have the request merger to put. And uh, you actually, this is the boilerplate. I'll employ you to just copy that and get that into your code and get that working. It's going to echo the response, which you also have a helper method right there to take the status code and the response with status code 400 and the response as well. And it's going to map it to the status, the content type, application JSON, and encode in JSON. All that will be done when you're running or calling the echo response with the status code and the response type. Now let's move on. Now you have to fetch your data, the name, the username, and the password. You have that, you call the request and pass that into a variable to be used. You instantiate the DB operation. Now you want to interact with the method right there in the DB operation. Uh, where you still need the DB, which is the, the connection to create a user. Now you're calling this method, which is sitting right there in the DB operation over here. Create user. You have it over here. Create user. So cool. Now move ahead. You're passing those three parameters and you have your request. So if the request or the, the, the response rather, you get your response. If the response is zero, definitely it's a successful message you are successfully registered and now if the response is one we've actually declared the response will be needed from uh the me the function that will be running because now if the result is success we should return zero so it's not that we're just uh using any integer value uh if it's not it should return one if probably it did even run at all it should return two so we should now map those responses to a particular request code uh, so that's the response code. That's what we have now. So we are mapping that to 201 when you are creating the user is 201 created cool And if there is an error somewhere you pops out an error called while registering 200 response and Another one. Sorry. This user already existed. That's the user is existed uh, And you need don't need to create another use similar user You re return er an error as well. So that's for the create user Let's get to look at, at the login. The same flow. You call the part. So this is what is going to be like calling the user login. We'll get to quickly look at that right there in the, the advanced REST client that we'll be using to call this. Quickly, let's brush down the login. The same process. You have the username and password. You get that into the variable. You call the DB operation, the object you create. You call the user login. You pass the parameters. And from that, you extract the response. What kind of response are you having? If it's a successful, that the error should be false. You try to get the ID, the name, the username, the API key, 
that is actually resided in the user's table and you return those values if it's an error you also return an, an error with true uh, with a message to tell the user what actually transpired and you echo the response passing the response key and the response itself which kind of response is it toward and the response itself so that's just it that's the way you create your user and you create the user login let's quickly run this test and let's see if these guys really work now in the create user i'll just pick up the url over here make life easy for you i come over I should have the the advanced let me launch it so i'll just quickly do uh, uh a kind of test for you uh, you could use postman as well uh let's copy that into the request url paste it you post all right we have the post link so we get to uh check uh the parameters that will be added we have the name username and password firstly you need to change the body content type to the application x that's the www from the url encoded that's the format the same thing goes with the editor uh, form so it's like we're just filling a basic form just mimicking the uh, form structure from the client now we're going to add uh, the parameters needed which is uh, the name we need username and one more parameter password so this time the name let me give it something else let's call it smith peters with the username smith line and a password smith line one two three four cool we have the name username password just uh in par with the parameters needed to create the user the name username password cool so we can add a head click on the send what do you get 201 response created with a message you are successfully registered so you could actually access that via the local host php admin does the interface now we'll get to see the new record by clicking on browse can you see smith peters username smith line password encrypted with m5 likewise the api key so you have that set up now uh we need to test for the login let's get to pick the url pointer to the login over here it's going to be http localhost users version one the user login you copy you need to parameters username and password let's get to do that change this paste that in we are still posting username password that's the only thing we need just close the name at this point in time so what you're gonna do we're gonna issue the query do you have that you have the 200 okay successful with an id the name of the user smith peters the username smith line api key you could see so we were able to fetch the necessary columns from the database which is from the table of users which is unique to uh the username smith line so that's just it uh we've actually come completed uh, the basic API we needed to set up the user authentication, login, and register. We'll be added straight to a retrofit, uh, which we'll be using uh, as the client library to interact uh, completely with the API setup. Uh, we'll be doing that in Android uh, using uh, Android Studio, which is going to serve as the client. And uh, I'll be doing that in the second part of this video. So I employ you to stick glue to the channel and don't go anywhere thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout the first part watch out for the second part bye bye for now